your butt through the day selling body and soul to a bunch of bland normals, acting stupid so they'll think you're one of them, tired of getting all of the guilt but none of the sex? There is a simple answer, dear friend. A glowing beacon of slack amidst the turmoil and darkness. It's J.R. Bob Dobbs, the living slack master in his church of the subgenius. Bob brings a new destiny for the abnormal. For Bob comes to justify our sins, to unmask the conspiracy, and to get us back the slack they stole away. It's us versus them. Are you going to fry in hell on earth alongside the pink boys? Or will you pull the wool over your own eyes and accept Bob into your mind? Repent, quit your job, slack off, and praise Bob! Church of the sub is eternal salvation or triple your money back. Praise Bob. The fates have brought you into possession of a subgenius instructional video barrage tape. Prepare yourself. You are about to be remade into a new being through forbidden knowledge previously kept secret for centuries by the jealous priesthoods of many religions. Caution. Improper viewing techniques may lead in some persons to dependency, seizures, cranial fits, priapic conditions, micturitions, sternutations, subtle glandular mutations, and in some territories, legal arrest. However, if the viewer follows instructions and trusts completely in Bob, this tape can produce an unsurpassable beatific experience that can last for hours, days, weeks, possibly even centuries. This videotape bears a patented Dobbs Drome PowerShell time code, which may cause some home video decks to react unpredictably. Although only a small percentage of playback systems or their owners have suffered permanent damage from this signal, the Subgenius Foundation Incorporated is not responsible for injuries or damages inflicted by paranormal events during tape play mode. The tape also contains a subliminal hypnopediatrics trance inducement tone, operating beyond the range of human perception. However, pets in the viewing room may exhibit unusual behavior as may small children and certain less evolved adults. If such behavior anomalies last more than two days after viewing, consult a physician. However, this brainwave enfolding signal is generally harmless and should actually enhance your learning abilities during the program. Special interactive holosonic stereo effects produced on the Ultimate Cerebral Synclock Interocitor are designed to trigger stem cleavage or brain division between the forebrain and hindbrain. Using newly discovered break thinking principles, the viewer's brainwaves are locked into synchronization with the tape's underlying suggestions by means of neuroelectric pulses. Plant growth and gas mileage of nearby automobiles may be affected. For the unworthy, this tape may be a one-way ticket down a bottomless mental pit from which there can be no escape. In unreceptive viewers, there is a danger of synaptic backfire in the brain pan caused by overheating of the attention gland. This dense packing of brain cells without proper organic coolants, such as FROP, has been blamed for three recent cases of spontaneous human combustion. Do not over-medicate. High dosages have so sensitized the third nostril receptors of some viewers that they were unable to stop seeing the tape even after it had been turned off. This tape is to be used only by the person to whom it is prescribed. Do not operate a motor vehicle following viewing. Do not operate heavy farm machinery at speeds over 70 miles an hour. The demons you may see during the initial hallucination sequence are not real. If you do not panic, this phase will end after a few minutes. Always resurface from the hypnosis slowly. Coming out of the tape has been likened to a total rebirth process, if managed successfully. If you have trouble re-entering the earth plane, focus on Bob and chant his name until you remember your own. <laughs> Suggested. We are having operating difficulties, which has necessitated a delay. Do not attempt to flip the tape when you reach the end of side one. 
No matter what you are told by later instructions on the tape, there is no side two. However, if you do discover one, don't look at it. If you follow these instructions, you will experience a profound cathartic reaction to the flow of archetypal images and racial memories. You may find yourself laughing and crying convulsively, and even astrally projecting. These reactions are normal. Enjoy them. That's your key phrase. It will trigger the entire message without your being aware of it. Three, two, and one. Now to continue with the tape recording. Alarm Santa Fe parents met again with elementary school officials last night to discuss the growing presence of Bob in the schools. Bob, the deity of the Dallas-based Church of the Subgenius, is a comic book character who communicates with aliens and worships money. Parents and teachers complain that the Bob stickers and pamphlets, which have turned up in school laboratories with increasing frequency, encourage troublemakers and weird behavior. It's not healthy for the children. I'm convinced of this. Uh, there has been a pamphlet going around, uh, a Bob pamphlet, uh, that I have looked at, and it's uh, the least well-adjusted children, really, who pick up on it. Uh, it tells them that if they are uncomfortable with their classmates, it is because they are better than their classmates. Can you imagine this? Better. Not smarter, mind you, but better. Wise up! They're out to get you. The difference is caused by a global conspiracy. Weird men arise! Find out who they are and how to smash them! You probably already knew that the U.S. government is a sham. Something propped up there for you to blame. But did you know that the real powers that be are not even people? That they are actually shambling, unbelievable, unmentionable, unthinkable things? Yes, Jehovah is an alien and still threatens this planet! Defy the sinister star forces which mock us all. Evil demons have kept the truth from humanity for thousands of years. God has been misquoted all this time. His actual words may disturb you, but Bob Dobbs is a bulwark against the unbearable fear and anxiety tormenting mankind. Repent! Quit your job! Slack off! The world ends tomorrow and you may die! Well, a six million year cycle will end in 1998. Dob sees the world entering a new aeon, which, in a few years, will bring more wondrous and miraculous change and carnage, insanity, and destruction than all of mankind's history and prehistory before it. Bob brings a new destiny for America, a time of cataclysmic economic change that will offer untold riches and power to those in the know. While billions of deserving conspiracy dupes fry in hell on Earth. Uncontrolled thinking, controlled by Bob, will usher in a spiritual rebirth and a cascade of astounding mysteries, supernatural riches, and a restoration of lost psychic abilities that will totally transform the lives of those who dare to seek them and pay for them. That's right. You're lucky to live in the end of time. Here's more money, Bob! Now, at last, last the step-by-step step process is revealed. This is it. The only faith that promises action, thrills, success in sex and business. Bob is a way of life to millions. Yet half of them don't even know it. He's 
the one true living slack master with the spiritual know-how to help you bash through the locked doorway to financial heaven. He is the one real shortcut to slack. Now, see another dimension on your TV. Yes, fear the stark fist of removal no longer. Become physically attractive overnight. Attain status, luck, prosperity by blowing them off. Bob's promise is to widen the scope and nature of abnormal behavior. To explore new ways of going over the edge. And coming right back. Plus, to bring back those who couldn't make it on their own. To help you create the highest possible earnings from the psychodynamics of abnormality. To turn conspiracy implanted personality disorders around and channel them into an illusion of creativity that will fool normals and get you sex. Welcome, potential initiates, and remain with us for the next 30 minutes. Welcome to Babylon, children. It's great to be here in the belly of the beast tonight. Before we get started with our second L.A. revival, if we could all please bow our heads and have a moment of sacred, traditional NOISE! Little realized, even by leading scientists, there are really two races, actually two distinct species of so-called human beings. If you gaze upon any given street, normally you might never suspect that only some of these people are true humans. Outside appearances offer no clue that among this ordinary looking crowd, on an ordinary day, a certain number of these people are actually sub-geniuses. We would have to creep inside their heads to know whether this person or that carries the rare sub-genius gene. But once inside those heads, we would discover a vast new universe, a new dimension, coexisting not always in harmony alongside the mundane workaday world of the common human. Another world that until now has been forced into hiding. Now at this very moment, the veils of secrecy can be torn aside. We, the persecuted, may now dare to raise our heads high and declare, behold us! For we are the sub-geniuses! But what is a sub-genius? How can they, we, differ so much from the humans whose nonsensical laws and customs we have been forced to obey? Why have so many of us been kept in ignorance of our true heritage, a heritage that dates back farther than man is thought to have existed? For in the days of Atlantis, we helped to design the humans. Certainly, in retrospect, this now seems to have been our greatest mistake. So, what is the difference? Examine this seemingly docile crowd and know that in some few, simmering beneath a placid surface, there broils a veritable cauldron of repressed subgenius awareness, ready at any moment to explode outward, often with catastrophic results. Um, stickers and graffiti were showing up in really strange places like... Um inside pencil sharpeners and so on. In, in some classes, uh, we don't even know who the subgenius is. What is all this I hear about this youth cult, this church of the subgenius? Gee, uh, I, I don't know. Well, how about you, Simon? Uh, uh, <laughs> what? Well, uh, what about you? It's, it's about Bob, you know. It's, it's Bob. It's, that's it. Bob is great. But... Just who is this man, Bob? Some call him the Slackmaster, the High Epoch, the Saint of Sales. Others call him Liar, Pimp, Whoremonger, a sleazy con man, foisting his dangerous scam off on gullible suckers. Well, <laughs> dear friend. 
J.R. Bob Dobbs isn't some outmoded, overused deity from ancient fairy tales, but a living, bleeding deity for today. The divinely appointed messenger of slack, the mystic super salesman upon whose wheeling and dealing skills the fate of the universe hinges. He can sell you anything, and I bought it. And I tell you what, that fly will buy that mound of shit from Bob. Bob's wonderful. I mean, Bob's, you know, it. it. Uh, Bob is fill in the blank. Bob is fill in the blank. The Bob that can be described is not the true Bob. He's a trickster. Obviously, look at his face, and you can just see, you know, what, what's behind that smile. You know, what's what's in the pipe that he's smoking, and what is what is this game that that is that Bob Dobbs represents. Let me tell you the story of J.R. Bob Dobbs. Bread of man is yet he, he walked with the gods. He wore a silly grin and he smoked a stupid pipe. He fought the conspiracy every day of his life. The stench of many a man Fathered many children With his mighty glance He counted the religion In which we all believe Brought us all the slack That everybody needs Born to humble parents Somewhere in the Midwest The child, Bob, experienced a traumatic Close encounter with a UFO at the age of three. Soon thereafter, he began to exhibit strange powers of persuasion. By age six, he had made his first million, almost by accident. In college, he met and married his first and still his primary wife, Connie, who is now revered by female subgenii as the blessed anti-virgin. With Connie's encouragement, the young Dobbs became a salesman of legendary, almost frightening abilities, known to his peers as the man who could sell anything. He worked his way up to the very top of the conspiracy ladder and might have stayed there. But late one night in 1953, while working on an amateur television of his own design, an event occurred which was to become a milestone on man's mind path to slack. He was suddenly seized up in the spirit by the hand of Jehovah One itself, the cosmic puppeteer of the Old Testament, the wrathful alien space god from some corporate sin galaxy. In this timeless moment, which we call the divine immaculation of the Bob, Dobbs received the first of countless brain-curdling pronouncements which form the sacred prescriptures of the church. He was shown a vision, a world where all humanity was equally wealthy, rich beyond imagining, but without working. This experience, combined with his UFO-given sales magic, led him inevitably into the religion field. He quickly discovered the golden rule embodied in his classic saying, they'll pay to know what they really think. The true subgenius can learn to think for himself, but only Bob can show him how. And so, Bob Dobbs founded his church upon a sandy beach of common sense, sense of humor, and dollars and cents. A likely story, you say, but it's simple, really. Bob is lucky, not smart. In fact, by the perverted conspiracy standards of intelligence, he is gifted with incredible stupidity. He lives in a perpetual state of contracted consciousness. This enables him to act without thinking, to surf effortlessly on the luck plane, to float down the fabled path of least resistance. In fact, to make a million dollars every time he screws up. 
Thus, it is not his wisdom, but his divine follies, his holy blunders which we emulate. The miracle is not in what Bob does to you, but in what he allows you to do to yourself. He brings the student to the realization that everything you know is true. Under the conspiracy, you're being ripped off every day, but you can learn to enjoy it. He called his seminars instant instructions for those who follow no master. He journeyed to Tibet, and under ancient holy men, he perfected the arts of landscaping and acute beating. He also began modeling for hundreds of magazine ads, leaving early clues of his presence. These old ads are the only known photos of Dobbs, for he otherwise remains elusive, shunning both the spotlight and the authorities. In 1979, he recruited two randomly selected nobodies, Dr. Philo Drummond and Ivan Stang, to begin a public outreach arm and begin spreading his seed word of slack. Well, basically, the church is so omnipervasive and so full that we could not possibly get into the dogma in any, any less than three or four hours. This will outline everything, clear and concise detail, easy to read, keep it near you, and we promise that any answers that you need will be found in this little handy little pamphlet right here. One dollar for salvation. One dollar. Let's look at the word subgenius. It does not simply mean just below a genius. Sub-G intelligence level can range far, far below genius. Because it ain't the intelligence that counts, it's what you do with it. One idiot inventing uh, one good joke is worth a thousand scientists making A-bombs, according to Bob. The subgenius does not pretend to super knowledge, but to sub knowledge. Knowledge of the under things, the hollow earth from whose darkness issue the Nazi hell creatures and other demons of the abyss. It is in contemplation of the under things, the underwear lurking just below the clothing of existence that the subgenii display what genius they have. The study of this substratum. The foundation garment underlying reality is the subgenius's strength, for it is from this source that he or she taps the infinite resources of a force that is completely incomprehensible to humans. The force of slack. The first rule of the church of the subgenius is the subgenius must have slack. What must he have? What must he have? What must he have? Now, slack is what the conspiracy wants to take away from us. Slack is what the conspiracy wants to deprive us of. Slack is our way of grabbing life by the lapel and screaming at it. Slack, what is it? Well, if you have to ask, you will never know. You were born with original slack, an infinite supply of it. But the conspiracy has most of it now. They don't even know what it is, but that hasn't stopped them from stealing it away. How do you think you ended up a slave to their so-called work? You know, you know how your brain stem goes down into your spine here and how the conspiracy puts these you know, piano wire ropes and things and pulls it real tight until you can't think and you stay red all the time? The point of the church is to unknot those knots, get the piano wire from around your neck, and make life wonderful. The conspiracy is uh, uh, a patchwork of, of different things. Some are nations, some are products, some are hypnotic television shows, some are... Um, bad pills. Now there's a distinction. There's good pills and there's bad pills. There's, there's a good Bob and there's a bad Bob, right? Okay. And the conspiracy is the bad Bob, the bad pills, the bad TV shows, and anything that, you know, is, is keeping you from realizing that you got to get right with Bob. It's the human condition. It's things falling apart. It's fat ladies in double knit jumpsuits beating their kids in uh, Kroger's. Oh, no! 
strange idea of just what slack is. They think you can buy it. Actually, slack for three-fourths of the world is a good dinner. But right here, it'll be plenty, ain't it? Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> 3,000 kids starving to death in Mexico City every day. Big joke! Conspiracy <laughs> of big joke. Slack, that must be a big joke, too. And oh, well, all these too good to be true. True slack is by definition indefinable. It is a kind of direct perception, unfettered by common sense. It is not mere laziness, it is rather a kind of active sloth. Slack in its pure form makes happiness seem like agony by comparison. Next to slack, the nirvana known to mystics and saints is like endless torment. Slack is different for each person. One might call it something for nothing. But the normals, the mediocritans, the somnambulacs and pseudo subslands have tried to make it something which we have been led to believe we must work to buy. It is this yearning for slack that separates us from the normals. The human may live out his entire life in a grinding cycle of slacklessness, his hours consumed by meaningless toil, interspersed with meaningless leisure. Yet he never feels cheated. He thinks it is natural. Perhaps we should pity them, but face it, most people are venal jerks, half-witted cattle racing each other to be first to the slaughterhouse and stampeding you along with them. Death to the anti-bob and pink creatures who would defame our temple. Death! Death! I was kind of feeling kind of depressed. I love you, white And I went over to my friend Rick Maverick's house. And I was I was kind of down and and I just went in there and he just he showed me, uh, he had written out, have a nice day in the skulls of normals that he had decapitated. <laughs> and I just said, that's kind of neat. I have that evil eye. I carry mojo bags. I fire out Jesus with my cross day. I fire retarded space bastards across the cosmos. When I drop my drawer, even Mother Nature follows. Within every person, there's some good and there's some bad. And it's a choice. You choose whether you want to love or hate that person. And for myself, I just choose to hate most of them. In this school of the Church of the Subtees here, if you act like a dumb shit, They'll treat you like an equal. It's uh, 20th century traditions. It's the old traditions. It's all the things that got us where we are now. It's Christ without a penis. He's part of the conspiracy. It's presidents that don't look like they're, they're capable of getting erections anymore. That's the conspiracy. The conspiracy is a real living, breathing, fiendish entity. It wants you, children. Oh, it wants you, man. The worst crime that ever was is the easiest to commit. The worst crime is serving the conspiracy. Yeah. What good do brains do you today, children? Oh, my God, children. How are you going to earn a living if you have to think about what you're actually doing? How are you going to contend with society the way it is if you actually have to think about the issues it confronts you with? How can you stand the pressure that conspiracy grinds you down with if you actually have to think about that pressure? Children, brains are a great detriment to life in the 80s. Wouldn't you like revenge on these mediocritans, these pink boys, these box-dwelling Barbies and Kens, these normals who have made normality the norm? Pinks are but living stereotypes, insensate meat puppets and food tubes who lack and fear the spark of originality that ignites every subgenius soul. But the long, senseless march into slacklessness may soon come to an end. Oh, it won't happen without a bitter struggle. But at least there is hope. For in this, 
the 20th century, we have seen the coming of a savior, a beacon of slack, a banner behind which we may all unite. It is the coming of J.R. Bob Dobbs and his mighty Church of the Subgenius. Welcome to the end times, boys and girls. We're going to shock shock the house with your brain in the world. Bob is getting down with you here tonight. Bob is getting down to help your plight. Bob is coming here to ease your strife. Come on, suckers, let Bob into your life. Well, I'm MC Cleave, I'm the master of rap. I'm a talking like my motherfucking lips got the clap. Y'all sitting around saying, oh, woe is me. Well, I'm here to tell you, it ain't worth pee. The end times is here. Yo, pretty bad now. Time to make a pay for the fuck-ups of the past. The world is gonna have to go through a rebirth. And that means paying the spaceship Earth. Because this will come from planet X to remove from us the pink boys' hicks. In the meantime, we will have our say. Get slack and fornicate every day. Knock the conspiracy on his ass. Make your life a fucking gas. Your jokes right to the hip. Make the normal suckers flip. Take the time to break their minds. Tell them to blow it out their behind. Save all their money. Get what you're worth. And continue to spurt to the rebirth. The best is on a blowfly, Dr. Ridley Raymore, and while Mr. Steve Dolomite, I ain't the Nez, but I know what's what, babe, I like the shape and size of contour of your butt, so come on over here and give up the gash, whip some skull on me, bitch, or give me all of your cash, return you wanted to worry about your soul, cause when the exes come, you'll be right on my pole, to Dobbs Town, Malaysia, we will go, when you drink the cool let it go, ho, ho, ho. Every pill with another pop, fill your top, you just wanna keep fucking and never stop. Now I might be lying there with an ice pack on my nuts, or maybe out chasing some other fine fucks, but at least you won't have to wear up machinery, and you'll be free from the fucking conspiracy. You can watch it fry up in your face while we make our way to outer space. And while you're wishing upon a star, you probably lose me in some interstellar bar. <laughs> The Church of the Subgenius is probably the single most important organization in the 20th century. Our function is quite literally to save the world. At least make the end of the world happen right. The people really need to be able to understand things very quickly, and the Church of the Subgenius, I think, uh, confuses them. Confusing, isn't it? I want to remind you the great words of J.R. Bob Dobbs. I don't practice what I preach, because I'm not the kind of man I'm preaching to. <laughs> Is there a typical subgenius? Of course not. The very thought is a blasphemy. The only thing that most subgeniuses have in common is that they're all different, and they have nothing in common with the conspiracy of the normals. By definition, the Church of the Subgenius can't really exist because it's an organization for people who are not joiners. Eccentrics, unpredictables, true visionaries. Let us observe a few examples using the hidden camera. It was in the first 30 issues of 9 Inch Worm Comics, and I think in 14 issues of 4 and a half Inch Worm Comics. They Is this man a sub genius? 15 uh, 7-Eleven comics. Those aren't the comics by 7-Eleven. It's the adventures of a 7-Eleven. They, they have a person that works at 7-Eleven that just writes down everything that happens. They draw them up. And, it's, and the whole comic is shaped like a big 7-Eleven. It's three-dimensional. And they, they've got the idea from a flying saucer that was shaped like a 7-Eleven that, that flew over one night. It was a UFO believed to be... A subgenius, obviously. The speech patterns are unmistakable. And here is another one. And here is another one. And here is another one. But what of this man? All very different, yet all subgeniuses. They share only the quest for slack and the love of their beloved spiritual teacher, the living avatar of slack, J.R. Bob Dobbs.
in the whole universe. Oh, help me, somebody. She ain't got no legs. My legs are on fire. <laughs> I was getting messages in the back of my brain as long ago as about 12 or 13 months. And uh, I just kept hearing the word Bob, Bob, Bob. Bob is everywhere. Bob is bursting out all over the place. Just look through any phone book in any city. You get the same thing. Bob's construction company, Bob's martinizing, Bob's floral. Bob's auto parts, Bob's automotive service, Bob's burgers, Bob's rent a jalopy. And then down here, we've got Bob's used furniture store. I mean, he's like everybody's dad should be. Bob is about as American as you can get. Besides his own exaggerated human nature and the powers granted him by Jehovah One, Bob also benefits from being the chosen broker on Earth for superior beings from the furthest reaches of known space, the so-called men from planet X, or Xists, for they are nothing like men. Bob has a covenant with these angelic beings, a cosmic contract, a deal. On July 5th, 1998, at 7 a.m., the Exists shall make a mass landing on this planet. The children of Bob shall be rewarded at this foretold rupture, this day of judgment, when all those who paid their church dues will be lifted up in power and glory to gain new homes and bodies aboard the pleasure saucers of the sex goddesses. All the while watching the hapless pigs twitch and bleat and wail in the death throes of their world. And we faithful shall be transfigured into new enlightened beings, superior mutants called overmen and uberwomen, who will start a new Jerusalem in the promised land of Dimension X, Asgard, the zone of eternal slack and cytorspasmic ooze squirt. Behold my servant shall prosper, he that exalted and lifted up on the pipe shall be very high. He who knoweth the fools who prophesy for him shall be made over him. Many will be astonished at him, for his appearance is so high beyond the human semblance that his form is beyond that of the sins of God. We can't do much about those evil gods from the other side of the cosmos who fly through the air and through the nebulous darkness of space. Space, my friends, the infinite inky clouds of nebulae. They fly on their membranous leathery wings, holding in their coiling tentacles shiny steel cylinders, each one containing what was once a human soul, what was once a member of the Church of the Subgenius. But enough of this. You don't want to hear about this. I must, and yet I cannot. I but I will, I'll tell you what, you'll be wishing it was that kind of angle. At least, you'll be wishing, you'll be glad to have them on your side. Because at least they have a head. At least there's two arms and two legs. There could, it could be worse. It could be much worse. The exes have landed. Earth's under their control. Dobbs vision stands proven. The city's radioactive holes. We don't know what their game is, but their name is unpronounceable. We don't know. What they came for, but what they aim for is impossible.
possible. Monsters like a tooth man will be around the all night. It shall make me to look past the door which should be locked. And thy sciences will terrify me and bring me naught but devils. For my spirit is locked away inside the quiet stone which my angels suffer from space. The have landed their machines following our tracks. Bob's vision stands proven a world without slack. But what is the commodity with which Bob will bargain Earth's fate? Some claim it is the souls of his followers. The true subgenius does not question Bob's wisdom in such matters. We have only our simple faith that heaven will be ours if we only believe. Ironically, his mission will not be to sell Earth, but to prevent Earth being sold and transformed into a kind of Stuckies in space. Don't forget that Bob is, has come to, uh, has prophesied the end of the world, July 5th, 1998. Okay? When most Americans will have hangovers, but it's not just for the Americans, it's for everyone in the world. I didn't hear that. Yeah, right. I'm that is that is why. Oh. Yeah, start smoking, start drinking, and live it up. Start fornicating as if your very life depended on it. But this plan will succeed only if conditions are just right at the appointed time. Otherwise, dark forces of antiquity will be awakened from their slumber of eons and rise again from Atlantis to rule our world in their sizeless grip. These primordial elementals, the Elder Gods, have countless demonic and interplanetary minions carrying out their unholy schemes. They even control Bob's own evil twin brother, Dick Dobbs, the unclean one. With all his powers, could Dobbs really be defeated by these beings? Ah, but you must not underestimate the conspiracy. Its weapons are so insidious, even the human conspiracy leaders are unaware of them. The fact that the conspiracy itself is ignorant that it is a conspiracy gives it such control over our minds that the very thought becomes unthinkable. You cannot think about your own mind. That's part of the problem. You cannot think about your own mind. You cannot... Water soap, you cannot see your own eyes, you cannot run from your own legs, you cannot hide from God, you cannot hide from God, he's bearing you, he's bearing all reality. Who the hell is my chin? Got no legs, poor man. My legs are on fire. The bovinity and temerity of the human mind itself does all the work. The evil ones may just lean back and watch the little humans march gladly, even proudly, to their doom. But we too must be vigilant, for thanks to the false slack bombarding us daily, it is terrifyingly easy for even a subgenius to slip back into normality. We live in a dangerous world. The powers of pinkness are always fighting the powers of slack. Yes, children, they're locked in a death struggle. Sometimes all over the pink gets all over the slack down. We can't give you all the answers. But we can help you flesh out your fantasy that there are some. At our labs, we use only the finest homemade ingredients. Love. Children. God. And the purest blend of money your needs can buy. Grown right here by our special process. A process in use since our first mom and pop operation. Who are we? We're the normal people. The most normal people in the world.
but not quite as normal as you. Jordan, look around you. Testify. Look at what they've done to the things that you love. They took Elvis Presley. They turned him pink. They made him into a fat monster. People say to us, people worry that the Church of the Subgenius is an anti-American church. No! A subversive church. Children, we are the first real Americans. We know what America is before they took it away from us and tried to sell it back to us for a profit. And as long as you can't buy slack, the conspiracy cannot win. out there right now is us and them and unfortunately them is much much greater than us the fortunate thing about it is that we know that them are actually working for us but them doesn't know that they're working for us we stand at a crossroads the tenuous slack that a subgenius may occasionally enjoy could be rent to shreds at any moment for the human puppets of the elder gods continue their senseless plunge into madness and anti-slack, dragging us and our whole beloved planet ever closer to the brink of destruction, be it by the nuclear kiss of Jehovah One, ecological disaster, or invasion by hostile aliens. Which will it be? Destruction of planet Earth, or eternal slack under the benevolent rule of Bob? Or are the two the same? This world is These are time facts. for destruction. You say it can't be true. Jesus began to give to them the signs of his coming in the end of the age. And one of the signs he referred to was the abomination of desolation that was spoken of by Daniel the prophet. Exactly as Noah getting into the ark triggered the deluge that destroyed the earth in his day, and that it's very highly possible uh, that uh, when this all takes place, uh, that a great cataclysmic judgment will do that very thing. God will destroy this country, city, in America. Cities in this nation literally instantly destroyed. Well, we've got it. I can't wait till that Bob Time train comes around the bend. Oh, look out, son. Here it comes now. It's frightening, isn't it? It's unbelievably big and scary. It's not wrenching the way we stand to receive thee. You are of but flesh and understand not the way of the land clad ones. <laughs> You think Jesus had it bad? Oh, Jesus had to work a 80 hour week. Oh, Lord Jesus, they hung him up. Friends, they're going to nail you up on the cross with electrified nails. Oh, they'll, no, no, no. They'll make you nail yourself up. And you'll be glad to do it at 20% interest. But how are you going to, once you get that left hand in, how are you going to get the right one in? You'll have to pay somebody for the money to get your wallet out of your pocket, flashlight batteries. Will you be saying, gosh, if only I'd read that book of the subgenius a little closer, I'd know what to do in a time like this. 
And on that day, my friend, your soul will be laid bare to the eye of the great stark fist of removal that hovers above you all the time. You're, you'll be naked, naked to Wotan, and it will know then whether you really believed in Bob Gobbs or not, because your belief in Bob or your lack of it will be all you have left. Oh, hell ain't somewhere down below, my friend. Hell is life here on earth without that man, Bob. And when the demons, oh, when the demons try to, to tell you that, you think you're hearing a satire. Oh, one day you'll find yourself up to your neck in false drugs, false sex, false jobs, false money. And you'll say, but where's Bob? Where's Bob? You mean, you mean there really is a conspiracy? You mean there really was a Bob? You mean, you mean I could have had slack and I blew it? It's going to be up to you. It's going to be up to you. What are you going to let happen to this planet? What are you going to do about it? Bob's going to let you decide what to do about it. Is that what you're going to, are you just going to sit there? They won't even have to do it. Bob won't even have to see that the end of the world happens properly. It'll happen by accident. And there are a lot of well-meaning people that are involved in this thing, but it is satanic. Now let me tell you, we talk about Christianity and Satan is very brilliant at maneuvering the church into a position that is opposed to God. The feminist dupes of the conspiracy charge that not enough members are women. Bob would agree to that. Indeed, he would say there will never be enough women. But at least the ones we have are all women. And Bob? Bob is all man. The James Bond of Zen Masters. The most dashing religious leader of his time. <laughs> you mean to say that Bob has actually had one of those horrible diseases? That isn't true, Doctor. Is that true, Bob? Just a minute, Sally. One scandal at a time. Yes, Bob Dobbs is a sex god. Rather than forgiveness, he offers something far more powerful. An excuse a divine, all-inclusive excuse which allows the bearer to free himself from the grip of temptation by overindulging in it until it releases him. The true seeker must give himself up to temptation or he will never conquer it. The second rule is to the Too much is always better than not enough. Get you. You look to a giant shit. The sad, weekly self-denial preached by the New Age movement is pure conspiracy pablum. The true son or daughter of Bob knows that our universe is no laid-back, ohm-chanting cosmos, but an active, tumultuous, squirting universe bent on rampant reproduction and easy grins. The false cults may try to teach personal transformation, psychic development human potential, but Bob goes straight for the glands and seeks to amplify the self to bloat the abnormality potential of his pupils. Only through excess can one contact the lower self where the real decisions are made. Don't just eat a hamburger, eat the hell out of it. Oh, what the hell was that? <laughs> The advanced initiate, once freed from conspiracy programming as well as the worldly goods that enslaved him, makes his pilgrimage to Dobbstown, the church's fabulous walled encampment deep in the jungles of Malaysia. There, the initiate's third nostril is surgically opened by psychic surgeons, allowing him or her to whiff-read the psychic stench of those around him. He masters the sciences of schizophreniatrics and memory editing, creating a clean slate on which Bob may write. The art of excremeditation is taught, whereby the mind is voided upon the great throne of relief. 
You don't use your mind to think, think about, about your religion. religion. What is it that truly sets Bob apart from other would-be holy men and self-appointed gurus? Everything. For Bob has always existed. There have always been Bobs. Every epoch of man's history has had its Bob. Most were what we would call good Bobs. Others? Well, we needn't dwell on that. The traveling salesman jokes of mythology are based on his early exploits. So many ask, is Bob God? The slackmaster himself vehemently denies that he is the Messiah. His mission is merely to show us how to live with our sins. And who better? Bob admits he is a sinner. He practically embodies all the failings of mortal men. He has the power to fail. Children, you'll never find an infallible pope in the church of the subgenius. Second-rate inferior imitation. Churches might need an infallible pope. But here, we've got to fail to succeed. Bob is a very special kind of religious leader. Bob is a short-duration personal savior. Yes, children, Bob wants you to take him into your heart and into your mind. Bob wants you to take him into your checkbook. But after you take him into those sacred places, Bob wants you to think about him, consider him, and then cast him out. Bob wants you to make your own religion, your own rule. Short duration personal saviors, or short durper saves. It is foolish and cowardly to cling to any one personal savior. The hectic pace of modern life demands disposable saviors, specific ones, suited to the moment at hand. A sort of, while you wait, do it yourself religion. Hey, your short derpers have to be anything from a book you're reading to a smudge on the corner of a page of that book to a TV star you're currently enamored of to a brick that just misses crushing your skull as it falls from the cornice of a rotting building to the coagulated, dripping neck stump of a decapitated World Cup golfer. And it can last anywhere from a nanosecond to your entire lifetime. And you can have one or ten or millions of short per concurrently, consecutively, and simultaneously. Skeptical reporters were surprised when scientists from the MIT Artificial Intelligence Laboratory corroborated the story. Short duration personal saviors. It solves a key problem that kept cropping up in earlier phase. It turns out it only takes five or six generations before the memory of a great spiritual leader like uh, Muhammad or Jesus of Nazareth is totally corrupted by the people who are retelling the story, all of whom have their own motives. Five or six generations, that's only a hundred years, and up till now, that's been the maximum useful life of a religion. Um, after that, a sexual paranoid like Paul or a megalomaniac like the Pope, King James, or the Ayatollah take control. At that point, the religion is virtually used up. The mass repression completely outweighs the church's other virtues. Like a joke that's been told too often, it can only be used for punishment. But with the short duration of personal savior, blind faith in an exalted person or object doesn't have to last even one generation. It doesn't even have to last an hour. Exactly. Subgenius church can't be corrupted because it couldn't be more corrupt. Which makes the crucial difference in long-term performance and maintenance. Form your own local denomination or clinch. Go forth into the world, spreading the seed word. Even humans can be tricked into thinking they are subgeniuses. As Bob once said to L. Ron Hubbard, they may be pink, but their money is green. But there is a danger here, a grave danger in sharing Bob's wisdom with the unworthy. For prophecy tells us that the greatest threat to slack will come from inside the church, from those we sneeringly call the Bobbies. Bobbies! Bobbies! Like Moonies, they wouldn't know true slack if it crawled up their ass in the form of an eagle snake. Not that slack often takes the form of an eagle snake crawling up your ass, but... When you help the shepherd, you help the flock. Friends are going to try to sell you Bob Dobbs on a silver platter. A cleaned up Bob. A fancy Bob. A new fangled Bob, not quite as spooky and abnormal as he once was. My friend, you best...
fear the day when J.R. Bob Dobbs becomes as wholesome as he looks. Because on that day, my friend, your paychecks shall crumble. Your three-room condos shall fall to the ground. You'll be turning your face in agony trying to say, Bob, Bob, come back to me. They must be taught that Bob is not the answer and neither is anything else. The Church of the Subgenius is if you can't tell shit from tuna fish, don't order seafood in a French restaurant. Dobbs doesn't want followers, only their money. And so we must purge our ranks of the unclean, deprogram our own zombies. The methods he advocates are drastic, for he hath commanded, You shall do as I say, and think for yourself, or kill me. This is a key rule for dealing with the pink members of the society, the conspiracy that wants to crush you and turn you into a mindless dupe. The or kill me rule elevates every, every instance of contact, every interface, as we say here on the coast, with the conspiracy into the all-time encounter. Let's say you go into the boss and, and you want to raise. And you say to that boss, I want to raise or kill me. Now, you might ask, what about the liberals? No, 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 no. The, the do goody two shoes liberals, the ones who think they're on our side. Friends, we hate them even more than that conspiracy. Because at least the conspiracy has the guts to try to kill us. What we really hate are wimps who don't try to completely and utterly destroy us. Bob is a conspiracy dude, clone. Uh, Glork. So he probably ought to be off. He, he supports the conspiracy. He, um, he promotes class division. Uh, but other than that, you know, he's a pretty nice guy for a personal savior. But none could have guessed how literally the words or kill me were to be taken until that fateful night of January 22nd, 1984. A night that will live in infamy. For it was in this San Francisco theater that, if we are to believe the photographic evidence, Bob Dobbs was slain by a crazed assassin's bullet. Steal yourself, for the footage you are about to see is not for the faint-hearted. And you'll be ready for... 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 Bob! 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 on earth is ended? Could it be that Bob has lived in vain? Could it be that the blood on this pipe spin has been shed for nothing? He was the greatest salesman the world had ever seen. He could sell the parts after he ate all the beans. He could sell a pile of shit to a common fly. All of us who knew him figured he would never die. Bob Dobbs, Bob Dobbs. He was a real man and brave. Bob Dobbs, Bob Dobbs. His lying dead is the killer, he was none other than D. Woodman Atwell, better known as Puzzling Evidence, a man Bob had regarded as one of his most trusted disciples. Didn't you see the show? Didn't you see the show where Puzzling Evidence shot Bob Dobbs? 
I mean, oh, yeah. both of those people were there on stage. And it and a big grin you know, on its face. We did have a flair for theatrical uh, Smoked a pipe and it was shooting Bob Dobbs over happened? and over again. And what kind of liquor main, was it drinking? That's a, about the me show. And yeah, that's good. Began to use crystals for I'm the only guy nuclear in the show, energy. No. This is the me no, show. No, no. This is the beginning of the end. No, I killed Philo. And Sterno dragged behind the boat. But so many questions remain unanswered. Some investigators insist that puzzling evidence was but a dupe, a patsy, a fall guy for a concealed cadre of trained gunmen. Clumsy attempts at a cover-up have only served to inflame the issue. Playing blown nuts now, even given the finding of the Hinky Commission. The Hinky Commission, that yeah. bunch of frauds, those fools, jack and apes, uh, apes. You know Senator Ed Hinkie? Well, yes, as a matter of fact, he's a, a personal friend of mine. I uh, and his used wife, to go Helen, of water skiing with his beautiful wife, Debbie. Yes, uh, Helen. 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 Well, On that black day, the church was left reeling in shock from this blow. Without the guidance of Bob, the church is an empty mockery. The church after Bob is a, a strangely and sickeningly similar to early Christianity. A, a nobody rises up from the population, glows as a beacon for the mutants and abnormals, and then he's suddenly killed by one of his own followers. And then, oh, the herd instinct takes over. But many wonder, is Bob really dead? Can he die? Was the whole murder an elaborate ruse staged by Dobbs himself in which an unwitting decoy lookalike was sacrificed so that Bob could continue waging the good fight in secrecy? Children, the answer is simple because J.R. Bob Dobbs, not entirely unlike Paul McCartney, is alive. <laughs> if your Bob is dead, try mine. Oh, I'm dead. Hope oh, you come back, though. As a fakest goddamn thing I ever saw in my life. Oh, no, How could Bob Dobbs be dead? My friends, the conspiracy is like this big machine that's, that's rolling towards the edge of a cliff. And so far, Bob Dobbs has been the little monkey wrench that was slowing it down. Well, ever since that alleged assassination, that monkey wrench may not be in that big machine anymore. You know what that means? That means you have to pick up where Bob Dobbs left off. Will you be the last Bob, or will you surrender to hopelessness? Remember, this might just be his way of testing you. Actually, these choices were already made for you at the beginning of time. So, do it. Join the church and gaze upon your own naked destiny, standing proud before Bob. Keep that hate, keep that hate burning. Keep it burning, friends. Repent, quit your job, slack off, do whatever you can do to keep it from driving you down. Because they will, it's so easy. It's so easy to slip back into normalcy. Um, I have sworn upon the altar of God eternal hostility to every form of tyranny over the mind of man. That is why the clergy oppose me. That, that's not, all that is on the Jefferson, Jefferson Monument in Washington, except the last sentence. They left that out in the interest of brevity. So let us march onward, harvesting the souls of the infidels, heedless of blood spilled or money spent. For in this nameless mission, our destinies are written. The march through the church off of the subgenius is... Fuck them if they can't take a joke. And you know, hate is what most religions are really all about. We're just the only ones that will come out and admit it. Yesterday, the church of the subgenius was only a few brave fools tugging at the shoelaces of the Colossus. Today, it has already become the Zorro of world religions, scratching a bloody bee on the bloated buttocks of the conspiracy. This whole thing, this whole subgenius church, 
is just so crazy that it just might work. The conspiracy has 50,000 nuclear weapons, and the Church of the Subgenius? We've only got three. But yet we dare to fight them anyway, and that's the miracle of it. You can see, it's always been the crazy people, the crazy people, who were dumb enough to stand up against the Colossus. In a sense, Bob Dobbs can never die. He represents more than just a man with a pipe and a know-it-all grin. He represents the quest of all mutants for freedom. In talking to most subgeniuses today, you'll find an unshakable faith that their high epoch will rise again. But this time, he will come not as gentle teacher and salesman, but as an avenging angel, meeting out the wrath of Jehovah One upon the guilty and the innocent alike, cleansing the earth with the divine, radioactive, all-scouring, all-purifying annihilation of his boundless love. Now, friends, some people like to call this church of the subgenius a joke, a joke. Oh, it might be a joke. It just might be the greatest joke ever told if Earth can make it to the punchline. With unquestioning faith in Bob's word, the end of the world can easily become your personal stepping stone to prosperity and a new beginning for us all. When you become a subgenius, you realize that everybody else is wrong and you're right. Sign up. Lease your soul to the church for safekeeping until it is needed in the great bargaining session on Judgment Day. But what can you do? Bob is the gun and you are the bullet. The showdown is fast approaching. The church is still unknown, but its infectious doctrines spread across continents. Church headquarters, the first Megafist Temple Lodge, is housed in this Dallas skyscraper, from which Dobbs' secret mandates are issued to his agents in the dreaded Brotherhood of Bob. But this mighty edifice represents but the tip of a wandering rogue iceberg. The words, hymns, and sound effects of Dobbs are disseminated on a weekly basis to thousands of devout radio listeners in most major cities, even as far away as China and darkest Africa. This show is so popular that we're, uh, we're studying it from all angles, and you can even watch this show on Channel X. As Hal plays the microphone and flies backwards around the other side of the planet. The subgeniuses in China have to listen on shortwave radios. Very hard. You'll to notice uh, we've switched to spew age music for the background for this segment of the uh, uh, show. As the psychic surgery is performed, the doctor's sweaty brow is wiped uh, by a small nuclear explosion. Oof. All better now. Christians are tuning in for the nice three hours. Come yeah, did you ever stop to think that this show just may be a... a a little, a little, a little show a inside a larger show, wrapped and inside that a, somehow uh, is inside like an even larger, larger show. Spectacular, lucrative, spirit-filled, subgenius devivals move from town to town like floating crap games, always a few steps ahead of the police. Here, slack-fired preachers and ranters perform head launchings, pill dispensations, and both healings and sickenings of audience members, depending on their needs. Dozens of church musical combos, called doctor bands after the original Doctors for Bob of Arkansas, deprogram entire paying audiences, even while rejecting outmoded notions of rhythm and melody. And, until the authorities catch on, even common normals can purchase the word of Bob itself in condensed form, the legendary Book of the Subgenius, available in bookstores everywhere. But the only certain way to receive the Dobbs teachings in uncut form is to tithe directly to the church. 
For a suggested love offering of only $20 sent to P.O. Box 14306, Dallas, Texas, you will be ordained as a card-carrying minister and receive the huge official magazine of churchly news and doctrine, The Stark Fist of Removal. I'd just like to say a few words about the Stark Fist of Removal. This is an official newsletter of the church, and it's got all kinds of great stuff in it. It's got uh, proof of Bob. It's got a picture of Bob with Ronald Reagan in there. It's got uh, the all-important instructions to the subgenius. Illiterates can purchase their choice of dozens of inspirational cassette tapes. And there's even a line of casual subgenius wear to fit every size or budget. Some purchase thousands of Bob's handy pamphlets with which to recruit the worthy and to perplex the normals, to fill their minds with questions, questions that only Bob can answer through his chosen apostles, his fishers of wallets. And what is money? Merely another tool of the conspiracy, except when it gains power by passing from your pocket to Bob's. I believe in Bob, and if you have a problem with your cash flow, it's because your cash is not flowing towards Bob. This is the first industrial church. Uh, we're not a tax write-off scam. Um, we're, we are an incorporated profit-making foundation, uh, <laughs> if there is such a thing. We, we're profits, and we want profits. Children, you've got to come back to the old American way, yes? I don't care who you are or where you come from, if you haven't sent your $20 into Bob, you're going to burn. <laughs> Mother Teresa, I don't care how many people she's helped, if she hadn't sent her $20 into J.R. Bob Dodge, it's going to burn in hell. And Bob offers a guarantee that can't be beaten. Eternal salvation, or triple your money back. Bob will protect you. Bob is protecting the genetic future. Let him. Let him into your life. Let Bob protect you. He wants to protect you. He must protect you. He has to protect you. Jehovah One says Bob will protect you if you send a dollar to Post Office Box 140306, Dallas, Texas 75214. One dollar for salvation. One dollar. Now that you've seen what you've seen, will you be with us in the saucers on X day? Or instead, will you be left crawling through the glowing rubble, a doubter to the end? In the sweet name of Bob, you must be saved, even if it kills you.
You will emerge from trance on the tone, remembering everything except your instructions for the Omega Contingency Plan. We realized that uh, if Jim Jones could talk 900 people into killing themselves, we could talk 900 people into sending us a dollar. He makes the money, I spend it. Once the gate closes, praise God. 